Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to cover twist correction. And here I actually have a combination to create a context where you could use it. So you see, I have this rubber joint and I'm actually using this chain IK constraint. And when I, um, so the first one here, this one, it's only the chain IK constraint. And when I rotate the tip, you see, it's kind of only rotate the last joint, right? So you don't get this nice thing that's going on here. So when I use the twist correction, and I don't really understand how to use it, or I just missed and understood it because I get this result. So there is something I'm, is it a bug or am I understanding it wrong? I don't know, but I'm um, just made a help script to solve it. So then we can have this really nice bending effect about this. So you might not need uh, the twist correction because if you have some stiff chain IK like this, you know, you don't have this, um, when you rotate the joint, you don't, you can get away with it. It doesn't, is that notable. So, but as soon as you do it a little bit more organic, like this, you want to address that. Otherwise you get this problem. So in other words, this uh, arm here and this arm here is using the exactly same way of moving. So I'm going to show you how to do this and start from a fresh scene. And this scene I have here and if you want to follow along you can download the mesh too so if you go into the description you can find this mesh and you can download it, download it unfortunately i won't have the textures but i will cover that in the next tutorial how to do the textures about this and it's really nice because if you have lines on the rubber mesh it's much more easier to get the feedback of everything so if I do like this and then rotate it, you know, oh, I took the wrong one. So if I do like this and let's rotate it. So, and if you rotate here, you get really nice feedback when you rotate it. So that's good to just make some um, textures for it so you can follow along. So the mesh is a parent object and it has the mesh and it has the bones. And what we can do, we can use this animation uh, bone render setup. So I'm just gonna pick the parent object and animation rigging bone render setup. And now you see we have the bones here. And if you don't have, find this stuff, you need to go into the windows and do the packet manager and find, find the package there. So it's really nice to have the bones. And if you notice, if I rotate bone five, <clears throat> it works. And when I made the mesh, I made bone six and it's bone six isn't really doing anything. It's just to skin the last sphere. Otherwise, when I bent this, it was a little bit um, uh, artifact in the end I didn't like. So bone six is like, um, not we can't really use that one and um, it's worth mentioning because first off we're just going to use the chain ik constraint so here i make a game object and this is going to be chain ik constraint constraint like that yeah and we're going to have a rig rig component here and also on the rubber joint we need to have a rig builder so we populate the chain ik constraint to the rig layer and now we here add chain chain ik constraint so this one asks for root and tip and we are going to use the root zero we're not going to use the bone six because we want to use bone five and the reason is because 
we are going to have a target here that's going to control bone five. And as you noticed, when we controlled bone six, we we didn't control the rotation. It would, would only control the position. So that's why we use bone five in this case. <clears throat> and then we're going to have the target. So this is our target. And I'm just going to make it the default position here. And um, actually, I'm going to rem remove the target. And the reason is because you don't need to do this, but I have a gizmo here. And I also have some color. So this is my game object that I'm going to use as a target. But if you don't, you can just have an empty game object. But the reason is because you see here, there I have these arrows. So it's actually pointing the game objects forward, up and right. And then I can just turn off the mesh render. And if you just have an empty one, you still have the arrows here. It just make it better to illustrate what I'm trying to do. So this chain IK constraint need this target. And now when I have this gizmo moving it around, it works. And if I rotate it like this, it works and also like this. But here is the problem. If it if we do like this, it doesn't work like we expect. So that's why we're going to use the twist constraint. Yeah, because you see, yeah, it, it doesn't look good. So we want the rotation to be on all the joints. So in order to fix this, um, you have this hi hierarchy. I, or how do you say it? Hierarchy here. We need another one here. So, and this one going to be above. So the order matters. So we first going to do the rotation and then we're going to do the chain IK constraint. I think I remember it right. I hope it is. Otherwise we just change the order. So here we have the chain IK constraint and we need a new rig. We do a rig and it's going to be the twist correction. And I'm actually going to do rig to be consistent here. So this one also going to have a rig. And we populate this one here. And if we then add twist correction here. So we need the twist nodes. And the nodes we're going to twist is bones here, here, these ones. So I'm just going to lock here so I can populate the list here. So I take these ones and move it here. And then we need a source object. So here we do the twist correction and we do the twist twist correction target and we put it here and now I'm going to unlock this one or maybe leave it so the thing is um, so here we have the um, twist correction target it's located here it doesn't matter where it is because we're only going to read the twist the position we're never going to read we're only going to read the rotation so if we play and now if we start to rotate this one you see it's it's um it is rotating so it's it's nice so how i thought about this is that if we have if i have this um if i have this one here let's do it again so if we twist this one, so now I'm having this um, twist correction. So if I twist it, actually, I'm going to do like this. Here, I'm going to, I'm going to turn off the chain IK constraint at a moment. So we're only going to use the twist correction. So if I now twist it, twist correction target, here it is. So if I twist it, it works. Looks really good, right? So there are four lines here. So if I do 
if you notice that um, first line is just above this blue bone. So if I do like this, now I rotated 45 degrees because it's four lines around this one. So it's 90 degrees between each line. But I rotated only 13 degrees ish or 12 ish. So it's really hard to work with this. I mean, how do you, so let's say if I take this, um, this chain IK constraint. So if I start and add this one again, I'm trying to explain the problem and I hope I'm good at explaining it. So if I rotate the tip bone here and I rotate it like, let's say 90 degrees. And now we want it to use the twist constraint to do it too. So if I rotate it 90 degrees too, now you see that this is definitely not 90 degrees. <clears throat> so this is where I made a script to solve this. And um, I'm gonna show you the script. So this is, um, chain IK constraint target, right? I should def, it shouldn't be gizmo, it should be chain IK constraint, always spell wrong, wrong. Constru, constraint target. So this one, let's say, if we, I put this, I'm gonna show you what it does, and then I'm gonna go through the code. So this one picks up the twist correction. And when I play, now when I rotate this one, you see it works. So when I rotate this one 90 degrees, it's actually a twist this one 8.4 degrees. And the reason why this one is um, only, uh, okay, so why the twist correct target only rotate 8.4 degrees as I figure it out, is that here we have six bones. So when you do twist correct target, you need to, um, you need to figure out how, how many bones you have in your twist nodes uh, list. And if I, if I rotate the top one 90 degrees, then I need to divide it by six here. So that's why 45 divided by, by 6 is ish this or is this result? So that's what I did. And um, so now if we are using this one and move it around. And let's do, if we move it down, I'm going to do, let's see. It was a little bit messy. I, I'm going to do it from the start. Let's see here. So if we do like this now, and I'm actually going to take about uh, away this rubber bone render. I find it a little bit annoying. And I'm going to take away my gizmo. So we only see this one. And actually the light is a little bit bad. So I'm just going to have it pointing from this side, so we see it better. So now when I rotate the uh, chain IK constraint, you see this one works. And this twist constrainer is always rotating. If you see here, it's updating with the script. So yeah, this is how I solved it. And I think it looks pretty good. So let's see. <clears throat> I'm actually going to try one thing because maybe we don't want this part to rotate. So if I go back here to the, this one here, what if we remove the, the this one? Let's try it one more time. Yeah, this is nice. Now we don't rotate the tip part uh, or the bottom part, so that's nice. 
So let's uh, go through the code so I can show you how it works. And what's happening is in the start function, we just populate uh, the list. Uh, no, actually. Okay, so we have the. This is the script here. So we have twist correction and we have twist target and bones count. So when we start, when we press play here, you see the bones count is six and the twist target and the twist correction. So it's actually picking up. You need to um, populate the twist correction in the twist correction. And then it will populate the two other ones in the code. So here it takes the um, bones count. You can get that here. And the previous rotation, you need that too. So what's happening here, first you get the current rotation of this, um, let's see, transform. No. So first we take the um, rotation from um, this chain IK constraint target, right? And then we take the difference rotation from the previous rotation because we're saving it down here, which means we can always calculate the correct cor um, rotation because we measure it from the last frame's rotation. Maybe you find this a little bit uh, uh, over, how do you say, redundant or too much work, but if you use Euler angles, you can, uh, you can have problems with that too. Or maybe you can do it this way too, but quaternions often take care of this um, gimbal locks and other problems that you can have. So here we do the difference rotation and then I use these functions to get the difference of the angles. And then here I just divide it with the bones count because we want to have the total angle. We want to divide it on all the bones. And then we just um, um, apply it and then we store it for the next frame so this is the code yeah that's all folks so if you like this um, please give me a thumbs up and please share some comments if you have something that you want to tell me about it maybe you know something i didn't really understood correctly about the twist chain twist correction because i find it it seems like you shouldn't be needed to do it like this to make it work like this. I don't know. Anywho, I find it look good. So thank you for, uh, for watching. And if you want to do these textures, I'm going to do them in the next tutorial.